Hello, Joy Olson, Blockbuster Fundraising. E-Gads, it's almost mid-January, so we have got to hone in, shore up our fundraising plans. And this is a great day to be here today because we've got six must-do steps for success with your fundraising plan. They're from Cosbox. They have recently updated it. I think it's just terrific, and I think you're going to love it. So, Cosvox says, it doesn't matter if you're running a multi-million dollar nonprofit organization or you're just a small startup. The key to financial success is a well-thought-out fundraising plan. So don't set yourself up for failure, folks, by just winging the fundraising process. Instead, you want to get your team together, or if it's only you, Go solo and get to work on creating a fundraising plan that's going to be terrific. Because you know, your fundraising plan is a document that organizes all of your fundraising activities over a certain period of time. And let's talk 2020, the year. These strategic plans generally include your campaign dates and strategies, your donor traffic tracking plans, your special event details, and a targeted communication schedule. Really important. A fundraising plan is meant to keep you focused and on task throughout the entire year. Well, why do you need one? First and foremost, fundraising plans get everyone within your organization, including your staff, your volunteers, and board members on the same page. It should give your team a clear idea of what will be expected of them over a period of time, as well as the anticipated results. These documents are also essential in shifting an entire organization's attitude about fundraising. Because number one, lots of times they think your job is just to go out to lunch with major donors. And let's face it, fundraising is oftentimes reactionary. Problems such as an economic downturn or changes in federal funding can arise at any time. So your fundraising plan should provide a clear course of action from diversified funding streams, leaving everyone with a little less stress on their plate when problems do pop up because you'll have a plan. It all boils down to the fact that when you are in the thick of a campaign that might be underperforming, you are much more likely to come out on top if you have a plan in place to tackle the issues. So, are you ready to create a great fundraising plan? Well, Cosbox says there's no time like the present to get started and follow these six must-do steps to ensure that your fundraising plan is ready. Number one, you want to assemble the troops, they say. When creating a fundraising plan, you definitely need all hands on deck. Figure out who needs to be involved in the planning process. After all, your development team may be in charge of fundraising, but my friends, it takes the entire organization to produce consistent results. So, Let's get the right people sitting around the table. First, make sure that your board of directors is involved. Their input and support are necessary for this document to go live. Small organizations may only have one or two employees, and it is therefore best to have your board there to advise you and get involved helping to create the plan. And after all, you've probably picked some people special just for their planning input. Okay, larger organizations that have many departments need to focus on creating this plan with top-down support. Therefore, it is best to include the leadership team, the development department, and those working with communications. Let me stress those working with communications. It's really important to have them in the loop and on the timeline. 
If you are at a loss as to where to start, talk with a professional nonprofit consultant like Blockbuster Fundraising or many other great ones that are out there. They can get you started or even guide you through the process if you require extra help. Okay, next. Two, you're going to set your fundraising goals. Your fundraising goals should be based on what funds you need to keep the organization operating. As a development director, I always worked extremely closely with the executive director and the budget because that is what you need to be totally aware of. What do they need for you to do? And of course, like Cosbox states, it's best to start with what costs were. What did it cost you during the last fiscal three, the last three fiscal years? If that data isn't available or you're just a startup, look to your estimated budget or check out the stats of similar organizations. Jot down the precise amount you need for the upcoming year. Then, Build on this goal. Do you see growth in your organization's future? If so, increase your year-to-year -year goals based on your anticipated growth. Cosbox has given us a wonderful calendar to work with and we're gonna put that up on the screen right now. So let's take a look. There you see the 2020 SMART fundraising goals for Save the Penguins. So their overall fundraising goal, which they put right up there on top, is they want to increase their fundraising income by 25% compared to 2019. Well, that's a pretty big goal. But now let's look at their focus areas, okay? The very first focus area you see there on the left-hand side is donor acquisition. That's wonderful. They want to improve their online donation experience for donors. That's a wonderful goal. Next, drop down to donor engagement. They want to build a middle donor program focused on giving upgrades. I think that's terrific. And then you look over and you see the obstacles and then you see their specific targets. They want to increase the average giving, giving per donor by 10%. And now drop down to donor retention, which is so important for all of us. That's a focus area for Save the Penguins. And they want to move from reactive only to a quarterly outreach program with impact reports. And they're really looking specifically, their target is to upgrade 20 donors to recurring giving annually. So isn't that terrific? So we hope that you've enjoyed that example and you can get more information at Cosbox and we're going to give you the link. All right, back to the drawing board here for your fundraising plan. You have to align with your mission, folks. You've got the right team in place and a basic idea of your goals that you need to meet. Now is the time to make sure that these goals align with your mission. So you've got to bust out that organizational mission statement. This statement, of course, should answer these questions. Number one, why is your organization in operation? And number two, what types of change are you making in the world? Base your fundraising plan on how these dollars are helping put your mission into action. You aren't just raising money, you are raising money to make a difference. So dissect your mission statement and goals and align the two. Explain in detail how much money you need to accomplish everything in your mission. Thirdly, now what you have to do is detail your methods. After you've aligned your goals and mission, it's time to describe exactly how you will be raising those funds. You want your fundraising plan to be so detailed that even those outside of the development world will be able to understand it. You wanna list the types of fundraising techniques that you will be using. Include strategies such as crowdfunding campaigns like Giving Tuesday, 
face-to-face -face asks, phone calls, mail campaigns, email marketing campaigns, fundraising events, a thankathon, grants and matching gifts, corporate giving and partnership development, recurring donation campaigns, and how about a month-long focus on endowments or planned giving? Then, list the steps that you need to take before and after each of the above activities. You may need to train volunteers, get your materials ready, or talk to someone about setting up the campaign website or landing pages. Take some time to really dive deep into each of your fundraising strategies. It's got to be good. Also, be sure to think of both short-term and long-term activities. What can you focus on now and what fundraising tactic can you expand if your organization needs additional funding? Now, next step, you want to look at the big picture. Does your organization have a strategic plan? I hope so. And if so, you'll want to make that sure that your fundraising plan aligns with your strategic plan. Creating a one-year, three-year, and five-year plans is a best practice in the nonprofit world. And you can do this with your fundraising plan as well. Your one-year fundraising plan should be very specific. Detail every fundraising activity you will engage in over the course of the year. Your three and five-year plans can be much more broad. Highlight key activities for each month. I love that. We do that here at Blockbuster Fundraising. Highlight key activities for each month as well as your ultimate goals. And if you see your organization growing and needing additional resources in five years, then outline a basic schedule that includes the steps you need to take now in order to meet this demand. Perhaps it's for a new building. Keep that in, in, in your plan. All right, now's the time. Bring out the calendar. You've written down all of your fundraising plan information in a document. Your team has come to an agreement on appropriate financial goals. Align those goals with your mission. Describe your fundraising techniques in detail and then put this information into one, three, and five-year plans. Woo! Now it's time to get your calendar, which will supplement your total fundraising plan. Your fundraising calendar will help you to stay on task throughout the year. On your screen, the 2020 fundraising calendar that Cosvox has given us as an idea for Save the Penguins. Look at that. Look, they've got January all mapped up. They're going to do a do new donor survey. They've got some social media plans. They're going to work on their donation form. They know exactly what they're going to do in January. In February, they're going after major donors, etc., etc. So you can see here that they've got their fundraising activity, what it's going to cost them, the hours they think it's going to take, the estimated income, the costs, the net income, the results. Look at that. What did they, how did they do there in 2019? And then they've got the other resources and notes and who, which goal aligns with the mission. It's wonderful. So this is a really great template for a sample fundraising calendar. Your calendar should detail all the steps you need to take, such as establishing your goal, website preparations, and volunteer training. Mark down your hard deadlines, action deadlines, communication schedule, and your donor retention strategy schedule. Viewing these dates as inflexible will keep you on task, even if you have to make adjustments here and there. And you want to keep your fundraising calendar on hand at every development meeting because this is a great tool to keep your schedule and your goals top of mind.
and you need to keep track of important dates that may be related to your cause. If you if you want to do that, there are a lot of different uh, calendars that you can refer to. CauseVox says check out Nonprofit Text for Goods, their sample cause awareness day so that you can be in alignment with what's going on around the globe for nonprofits. This has been some wonderful information for fundraising planning from CauseVox. They've also put together a template and a worksheet that you can use to build your own calendar. And we, we're going to give you the link to download that. And your, you know, your final fundraising plan is likely to change as your organization grows, and that's okay. It isn't meant to be a static document. The important thing here is you should never fly by the seat of your pants in fundraising because if you do, you're setting yourself up for failure. So taking the time to develop a thorough fundraising plan is going to pay off in dividends and help you and your fundraising team and your nonprofit stay on task and stay successful. So the best fundraising plans are certainly not the ones that sit within the top drawer of your desk. They're organized, actionable, and tell a complete story of how you're going to advance your goals. And most of all, your fundraising plan helps you prioritize between all the events, the phone calls, the meetings, the mailings. Your plan can bring you and your team back to the most important activities. And even though it may be more work in the short term, it's going to save you time in the long run by focusing your attention on the things that matter most. You should be armed with the knowledge of what worked and what didn't work last year. And be forward thinking in your approach to create an obtainable yet ambitious plan. Of course, think of your fundraising plan as both a communications calendar and a strategic plan. And remember, this is a living document, something that you refer to constantly, and one that includes key fundraising objectives, detailed plans to execute, and goals. And the first place to get started would be a fundraising plan and goals worksheet. So let's look at this spreadsheet now, a sample from CauseVox, and, and, and see if this won't help you. And you're going to see again, there it is, that, that we've seen it once earlier today, the 2020 Smart Fundraising Goals Save the Penguins example. And there you see what they're working on, what their focus areas are, what their obstacles are, what their targets are. And you see above that their strategy focus is growth through donor empowerment and retention. Even above that, you see that their overall fundraising goal is to increase their fundraising income by 25% compared to 2019. So this sample fundraising goals worksheet is, is really something to help you get started. And you can download this. And again, we're going to give you that link. All right. So as you can see, that will be a great tool for you, all right, for many uses. But what you really need to do now is number one, understand your needs and goals. We encourage you to begin this process by understanding your needs to pinpoint your goal. You need to have an organizational goal, okay? This is your macro goal and in theory, it should match your organization's mission. For example, you need to raise $250,500 to achieve the organization's mission of feeding a thousand families. Keep it concise. It doesn't need to be long. However, this goal should be the one that all the other smaller goals feed into. If you start working on something in the year that doesn't feed into this goal, then you need to question whether it's worth doing. Are you on track? So to calculate your organization goal, you should know how much you need to raise in 2020. For example, if your operating budget is $250,500 and you have $25,000 in government grants 
$20,000 in foundation grants and another $50,000 in pledges already committed, you must raise an additional $155,500 through other fundraisers. Your fundraising goals, your fundraising goals or micro goals should be SMART goals, specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, and time-bound. You should definitely aim high with these, but make sure they're realistic within the time frame that you have. These smaller strategic goals will feed directly into your organizational goal. For example, if you want to raise an additional $155,500 next year, you will probably need to increase the number of donors you have. Or you will need to increase the average gift from your existing donors. It is likely that you will need to do both. Put these goals in order of priority which ones will have the most impact and which ones should you prioritize. I'm sure that you'll want to do them all, but remember, this fundraising plan is about focusing your efforts on what will matter to your bottom line most. And by starting big, your organizational goal, that's your big goal, and working your way down to your micro goals, you now have a great understanding of what you need to accomplish throughout the year to be successful. Right here on the screen now, you're going to see an example of a fundraising campaign with a micro goal. And this is by Stupid, Stupid Cancer. A campaign such as this can have its own target that will help you to achieve your organizational goal. You want to study past fundraising trends. If you don't know where you have been, how will you know where you need to go? You may have heard the same a time or two. I'm sure you've heard it often. And hey, it really rings true when it comes to fundraising. Now, CauseFox says that they really believe that the best way to grow your resources is to understand what has worked and hasn't worked in the past. So, after you've mapped out your goals, the next step that they recommend is take that, that they recommend taking involves look backwards to critically evaluate the fundraising activities of your previous year. To do this, break out a spreadsheet and create a complete list of all fundraising activities you organized in the previous year, as well as any other sources of income. You do this for each of these activities and you want to lay, take a look now at a few factors. The expenses of running the activity. For each of these activities, you want to take a look at a few factors. We're going to put this up on the screen for an example here. These factors take a look at. The expenses of running the activity. You want to include your staff and volunteer time. Look at the benefits generated for your organization, such as revenue, brand, donors, and any other pertinent information. And then you want to evaluate this information to help you determine what the return on investment is for running these activities. You want to know whether a specific activity is worth repeating again, or if you need to come up with new activities to replace them. Every fundraiser wants to minimize expenses while maximizing returns. So calculating your return on investment is pertinent to making sure the money you spend is working for your organization. There are a lot of articles that you can see on how to calculate your return on investment. And remember to cover all sources of income on this spreadsheet. I mean, this list, I guess, could be exhausting, exhaustive, but it, it should include all your individual donations, including major gifts procured by direct mail, online fundraising, 
uh, special and in-person fundraisers, phone solicitation, membership fees, corporate sponsorship, company matches, grants, sales of items or services, a fundraising overview. Now, whew, take a good look at this spreadsheet. Highlight the fundraisers that you expect to bring in similar results. Mark those that you do not want to do again and cross out anything that wasn't worth your time or had a low return on investment. Now, third step you want to take is you're going to list your resources. As you know, fundraising takes more than a will. You also need a way. Now you know what your goals are and what activities you're thinking of doing. So the next step should be mapping out what resources you have to determine what strategies will actually be feasible for you to do next year. COSFOX says that they have found that the process of list listing your resources in a clear, organized manner can help you wrap your brain around how you can go about raising the funds needed. Okay, for starters, answer these questions. How many staff people can devote their time to fundraising? How much time can they devote each week? Do you have a volunteer base to help with fundraising tasks? If so, how many hours per week total for all volunteers? Are your board members required to fundraise on behalf of your organization? If so, how many hours per week can you expect them to engage? What is your annual fundraising budget, including marketing costs? Whew. Now, when you've answered these questions, organize your findings using this checklist on a spreadsheet or table similar to the one that we're going to provide below. List each staff person and the amount of time they can devote per week. Write down the average number of volunteers and their anticipated workly commi weekly commitment. Outline your annual fundraising budget, including staff time, fundraising, and other expenses staffing budget. Whoa. Remember to think outside the box with your resources. Where could you save time that will free you up to focus on other activities? Fourth step, outline your strategies for the year. Your strategies relate back to how you are going to achieve your fundraising goals. These are the activities that you will undertake to help you achieve each goal. Outlining your strategies may take some time. It will take time, but it's something that is worth doing with your staff or team because you're going to get ideas. COSFOX recommends doing a review of what strategies did and did not work for you last year so that you pick and focus on the ones that drove results. These strategies should also have specific metrics associated with them to measure their success. For example, how many new donors do you expect to acquire? And by what time frame? Remember your SMART goals. Here are some suggested strategies that COSVOX says that they traditionally see in fundraising plans and that ideally what the end product should look like in your plan. Okay, you ready? Goal. Increase the total number of donors by 5%. Strategy. Organize one major fundraiser per quarter and one small fundraiser per month. Strategy. Plan a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign to acquire new donors online. Giving Tuesday. Strategy. Use Facebook and Instagram ads to direct a targeted online audience to your fundraising website. Next goal. Increase the average gift size by 3%. How are you going to do that? Strategy. Create giving levels and incorporate into all online fundraisers. Strategy. Ask returning donors to increase their gifts. Strategy. Target one-time donors for a recurring giving campaign. There are some easy ways to increase giving that could be as simple as changing a button. 
the Irish International Immigration Center nearly doubled, doubled their online giving by replacing their PayPal button with a CauseVox donation page. Their average gift jumped up by more than $100 in comparison to previous giving. So you got to think through these things. You've got to get donation pages that really work. Okay, fifth step, create a path forward. It's finally time to start putting it all together. You now have a deep, thorough understanding of your goals, strategies, the resources you have to meet those goals, and some techniques that worked in the past. So let's touch some more on these fundraising techniques. After all, fundraising professionals don't simply rely on direct mail anymore, although it's still important. Today, your fundraising options sometimes seem, well, endless. And hey, that's a good thing. For starters, make a list of all the fundraisers or campaigns you want to run and when you want them to occur. Be mindful of remaining strategic, meaning you should use donor trends and knowledge of your donor base to outline your annual plan. So as an example, if you know that donors aren't as likely to attend an event in the summer months, focus on an online campaign at that time. Look through your data, uncover trends, or uncover certain results. This might be a, also be a great indication of best times and opportunities as when certain campaigns may be the best time to run it. Okay? and specific details for each fundraiser that you want to run. You want specific details. You want a fundraiser type and name. You want an anticipated income. You want to know staff and volunteer time. What are your marketing costs going to be? What are your other expenses? What is the day? What is the time? Who is the intended audience? And any other notes. Your detailed list will look something like this for every fundraising event or effort. Your detailed list will look something like this for every fundraising event, okay? And during this step, be sure to plan enough activities to cover your budgetary needs and be mindful of overstretching your current resources. And now, now you're ready to put this useful information all into a neat, clean, and organized fundraising calendar. Remember, this fundraising plan should be a living document. You should also use it as a North Star guide to help you throughout the year to constantly align your team and your priorities to strategies that will achieve your goals. While it's important to set these goals and strategies, you can also be flexible with this plan if you need to. For example, if a great opportunity comes up, can you replace it with one of the other strategies? It's important to review this plan every quarter to make sure you're on track and to see if any of your fundraising goals or strategies have changed. While many nonprofits and charities use an everyday calendar to organize annual fundraisers, Cosvox believes that a detailed spreadsheet can work wonders in keeping you organized before, during, and after each fundraising activity. And I just totally agree. I think it's a great blueprint. With all of the work that you have just recently finished and done, you want to use your plan to set up a calendar of activities so that your entire team is across what is happening and when. And they're excited about it. They are. Use, use your documents together to create an organized, strategic, and actionable plan for the great year of 2020. You're going to have a wonderful time planning and executing and be sure and check out the uh, Cosfox uh, workbook and template. We're putting up that link for you. Thank you, Cosfox, for this wonderful uh, template, this wonderful blog, this 
it's perfect for helping with our fundraising plans and we we totally believe that a fundraising plan is going to bring us great success for 2020. We hope that this helps inspire you to get your plan on, to make it great. We love being here with you today. We appreciate your time. See you again next week. Check us out at joyolsongroup.com, blockbusterfundraising.com, all kinds of free fundraising tips on our Blockbuster YouTube channel. We're loving our IGTV channel on Instagram and bye-bye.